A cloudy afternoon and lights are going on early. Yet there's no great reservoir of electricity to be tapped. Unlike gas and water, it can't be stored in bulk. It is generated and transmitted in the time it takes between flicking a switch and the light coming on. The central electricity generating board is responsible for producing and delivering huge bulk supplies of electricity to the local area board distribution networks. To do this safely, reliably and economically, it has one of the largest integrated power systems in the world. A system which has allowed us to take a reliable supply of electricity for granted. But in October 1987, the system faced its greatest challenge. Every day at this time, the engineers here predict the amount of electricity required by 50 million people hour by hour for the following 24 hours, then schedule power stations to meet the demand. In the 1930s, local power stations, of which there were hundreds, served local consumers. Today, only 78 power stations supply England and Wales. Through a command structure in one organisation, the systems engineers can instruct stations to increase or decrease power. National Control can call on 350 turbo generators to produce over 50 million kilowatts of electricity. But they must ensure that all generators run precisely in step with each other at 50 cycles per second. Most of today's power stations are sited for economic reasons near fuel sources. They're mainly coal-fired but the CEGB also has oil and nuclear power stations to diversify fuel sources. All power is fed into the national grid, over 14,000 kilometers of transmission lines, delivering the electricity at the speed of light to local distribution systems and on to where it is needed. Many factors help in predicting the amount of electricity needed. Among them, 30 years worth of computer data, regular weather reports from the Met Office, and even the times of popular television programs, at the end of which demand can increase by over a million kilowatts. The CEGB's power system is divided between six area grid control centers, all under the direction of national control. These advise on local needs and the cost and availability of local generating capacity. Bring me back. OK, John. Right. Bye-bye, then. Any problems that could affect transmission are recorded on a detailed plan of the grid system. With all this information, the system's engineers select the power stations to meet the demand. Whenever possible, they choose the most economical so that we get the cheapest electricity. They then inform the area grid control centers which generators in their areas will be required and when. Also available to meet demand is electricity from Scotland and from France through a cross-channel link which can bring in up to 2 million kilowatts. National control can also order control centers to push the buttons which will instantly bring gas turbines to full power. Whilst other buttons here start the pumped water storage stations at Festiniog and De Norwig. In two minutes, De Norwig can provide enough electricity to meet the needs of a city the size of Birmingham. At 7 p.m. on Thursday, October the 15th, 1987, England and Wales are demanding and receiving 36,600,000 kilowatts of electricity. But in winter, peak demands can rise to nearly 50 million kilowatts. 
As Thursday comes to a close, demand progressively declines. All is as the system's engineers expected. Demand is around 21 million kilowatts. The most efficient power stations are being used, with a top-up of one and a half million kilowatts being imported from France. Some of the power is, as usual, pumping water to the upper reservoirs of Denorwig and Festiniog. But 30 minutes later, the CEGB's integrated power system faced its severest test ever. Hurricane force winds sweeping up the channel unpredictably change course for the south coast of England. The high winds buffet power lines, causing them to touch and short circuit. Automatic systems restore the circuits, and consumers, if still up, notice nothing untoward. Wind speeds increase, and flying debris adds to the problem. More circuits along the south coast go out. Due to gales being experienced over there, the power link with France is lost. With no time to bring on conventional power stations to counter the loss of one and a half million kilowatts, area grid control centers are instructed to start gas turbine plant. At the same time, national control brings Festiniog and Denoli into operation. The hurricane has moved inland. Two major transmission lines feeding power into London and the southeast fail. Supplies into the area now rely on two routes to the west of London and a single line from Dungeness. A little bit in South London. Uh, do you think it's time to National control issues an amber alert. The whole network stands by for a maximum emergency. All lines into King's North substation are lost and King's North power station becomes disconnected from the grid. Engineers try to restore the links between power station, Hello. substation, grid and the local electricity board's distribution systems, but to no avail. Circuits are being lost as fast as they are being restored. I'll just log that, David. Area grid control centers outside the storm area stand by as Dungeness A power station is lost too. Soon, these unaffected control centers are to become more deeply involved as the whole electricity supply system in England and Wales is threatened with the progressive collapse of the national grid. An imbalance between power generated and demand affects the voltage and makes the system unstable. National control has no alternative. They reduce voltage in parts of the southeast and follow it swiftly by disconnection for one home in ten. Twenty minutes later, London and much of the rest of the southeast suffers the same fate. West Thurrock, Grain and Littlebrook power stations are now disconnected. Four million kilowatts, one-sixth of the total overnight electricity demand, is lost. Um, I'll be back with you in a few minutes to sort out some sort of programme over the next half hour. OK. Right. No, man. As most of England and Wales continues to receive power, National Control is able to transfer coordination of the system temporarily to the unaffected area grid control centres. Having borne the brunt, the time has now come to fight back. 
Kings North, Grain and Littlebrook operate their emergency black start procedures. With no outside supply of electricity, 24 volt batteries are used to start standby diesels, then gas turbines, which in turn start the main generating plant. The flexibility of the system enables East Grinstead Area Grid Control Centre to operate the three stations as power islands, working together supplying local demand, whilst they try to link them back into the main system. Other attempts are also being made to restore power to the rest of the southeast. Extensive switching activity takes place with partial success until the Waltham cross circuit is reclosed. Further connections are made and supplies are offered again to some area boards who, where possible, start resupplying their customers, industry and the public. The winds have decreased. Helicopters can now inspect CEGB power lines and bulk supplies are now available to all local area boards. However, the devastation wrought by the storm means that the immense difficulties they face in restoring all local supplies are only just beginning. The CEGB operates with a lower margin of reserve generating capacity than most other industrialised countries. Yet it also has a better record of reliability. Both are signs of a tightly run and efficient system. The challenge posed to the power system by the worst storm for 200 years was one of the most severe in its history coming only a few months before the 30th anniversary of the CEGB, which developed today's integrated power system. The events of October the 16th, 1987, proved that as well as working smoothly and economically under normal circumstances, it could also cope well with a major crisis. <laughs> 